coming up on this edition of Abled and On Air. We talk about the Self-Advocacy Association of New York State. What is advocacy? And how do we advocate for ourselves? And we talk about the history of the self-advocacy of New York State. All that and much more when Abled and On Air starts right now. Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yahad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Able and On Air has been seen in the following publications. Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists. Welcome to this edition of Able Den On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently abled. And, and we focus on abilities, not necessarily the disability. Arlene is not here today, but um, we'd like to say special thanks to the Self-Advocacy Association of New York State for joining us on this edition of Able Den On Air, and many of our partners and sponsors who have uh, graciously helped us uh, with Able Den On Air. Thank you for, um, for joining us on, on Able Den On Air. Uh, let's start with the missions and goals. What are the missions and goals of the Self-Advocacy Association of New York State? Okay, hi, my name is Uri Ramos, and I'm from self Advocate Association. As a grassroots represent, grassroots field citizen, and from the New York and Washington, New York and Washington region. Now, our mission is speaking up for ourselves as others. We are an organization funded led by people with the low mental disability for people with low mental disability. Our goals help people with disabilities speak up for what they believe, including their civil and human rights. We support we support people with the IDD becoming active members of their community. Just to let you guys know, if you don't know what IDD is, it's short for low mental disabilities. Okay. Um, Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Can you tell me, um, now let's go into the history of the Self-Efficacy Association of New York State. How did it get started and by whom? Okay, thank you. I'm Lisa Severino from Self-Efficacy Association 
New York State and the New York City Rochester region as a grassroots field assistant. The self-advocacy social nation New York State, also known as Sandy's, were founded in 1986 by Bernard Cabello, a former president of the Willowbrook State School. Bernard lived at Willowbrook from the age of three until he was 21 years old. Mm -hmm. Willowbrook was an institution that became known as a horrible abuse and neglect that happened there. Bernard worked with, worked together with Gerardo Rivera to show the world what was happening there. Mm -hmm. Now, to to show the world what was happening there. And they helped to get Willowbrook and other institutions shut down across New York State. Mm -hmm. And started our organization soon after that. So people with disability could get support in speaking up for themselves. Between 1985 and 86, Bernard and 12 other self-advocates serve as the Senior Steering Committee and work together to make Senior a reality. On April 29th, 1988, Senior were recognized by New York State mm -hmm. as a non-for-profit organization. Mm -hmm. So, um, can you tell me uh, what does an advocate do? And then what, sure. uh, since you're self-advocates self of New York State, um, what? so what does an advocate do? And, um, Explain, you know, your roles and what you do for the agency. Okay. An advocate is a person who knows their civil and human rights and help others by encourage them to speak up when they have a hard time to do it. Mm -hmm. As a grassroots citizen, which are basically why I described just now, but we also teach people how to... We also, one of our job is to teach people how to become an advocate and how to, we do that for many, many ways. And I think Lisa could, could get into more detail about it. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, so, um, thank you. So could you um, also tell me, um, uh, so what, what exactly do you do for the Self-Advocacy Association of New York State? Well, what, like I was, oh, go ahead, Lisa. Go ahead. You want 
you do it? Or do you want me to do it? No, no, no I'm saying both of, both of you. Go ahead. Okay. Um, well, we're um, grassroots field assistant. We teach people how to advocate for themselves and to help others. We mostly teach people and support them. So what exactly but what exactly role. do you teach them? Teach them um a lot of things. We have different um courses like Sini U. Sini U is a six week course mm -hmm. that teach people with disability all about self advocacy and leadership. Mm -hmm. It also includes topics such as the history of disability rights movement, mm -hmm. what is self advocacy, and what are rights how to become a strong self-advocate, and what are self-advocacy groups and why are they important, and also how to speak up in your community and legislators. We also teach a course, teach self advocacy 101. There is a short introduction to self advocacy. We also teach self direction training, person. We share personal stories. Right to write is how to advocate for yourself when using public transportation. We teach technology, me, and teach how to how to use technology to connect with other self-advocates, diversity training, and ableism training. Mm -hmm. That's all that um, well, So what exactly, this. okay, so um, what exactly is this training and, and, and what does it do? These are um, some classes that we teach to, to self-advocates um, about their rights and about the disability world. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, let's um, go back a little bit. Um, okay, so the self advocacy, the self advocacy of New York State was started in uh, in 1986, uh, and I understand about Willowbrook. Why? <clears throat> um, it, I mean. Uh, why do why did people really want to start advocating for themselves? Is it because of the maltreatment that happened there? Yes, and they want to um, get people to know that we're people too, mm -hmm. and we're we matter in the world. Okay. Um, Uli, did you did you want to add to that? 
No, I think Lisa got all of it. But basically, what you that there was a lot of issues going also when when we came out of Willowbrook. They were not a a op. They were not a state agency at the time. Oh, so, so there, there had to be. So, like so basically, now. yeah, basically there had to be state oversight, right, in order for it to yes. close. We did have that when people came out of Willowbrook. So we needed something. When and how kind of how self advocacy I tell the Willow Book that they cut it down, got into it. Mm -hmm. Also, we were facing a lot of issues in, uh, in you know, and we still if, are. Today. If you would like if you would like to tell me what what were some of the issues? Okay, and we still are finding it. Okay. So what All was right. what was it's fine. Uh, uh, so sure. what? Now so what were some of the issues that w were going on in Willowbrook? If you want to add to that, sure. And they still, yeah, they were. They were no, like I said, they were no state oversight. So we, I mean, it's still going on today. Like staff, I mean, one of them is staff. It's a staff strawish due to low pay. Mm -hmm. Basically, staff and that's one of the main issue today. And the main issue was that when they came around, when they came around, they, they, people are leaving, are leaving, um, are leaving their jobs stat because they're not paying enough money. And yeah, that, 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 that the, seems to be a big problem all across the, uh, the world. It's not, you know, like for example, I'm here in Vermont, and um, nursing homes and rehabs and other places like that, there's lots of staff shortages. And, there, yeah. and the, staff is having, the staff is having to do eight, nine, uh, eight, 16, or they're doing like three. Some of them are, are, are doing 16-hour uh, shifts. You know, because there's not enough staff to go around. And that's one big problem from nursing homes to to the little home. That is a big deal. Mm -hmm. And also that also that one of the issues is they don't get paid enough. So people so that were overtime, like in the nursing homes mm -hmm. or in what because not everybody could do the job they do for us. And there's some stuff is very very intimate. Mm -hmm. Also, there's sensible housing, which is a big issue, right? A big issue because some of, you know, we might, especially in New York City, where we I live, and probably they might have some problem also. But the problem is in accessible housing that some building, they don't prove up. So people, I mean, like, take example, my, my apartment. Mm -hmm. My apartment, you can, a person with a disability cannot really get into my building because there's no ramps mm. around. But that's, a, that's, so then, that's a law that they're breaking. They're breaking that law. Yeah. And also, I find out from my own research a long time ago that there was a law in New York City that at the 1930s, some, some you cannot put ramps in buildings in New York City. Well, here's, I find the, here, out that. here's, here's the thing, Sergeant to interrupt. They have something called, and I've done research on this numerous times, it's called a grandfather clause. If a building is, oh, let's say a church, okay? Some churches, synagogues, mosques, any, any, any religious building that, uh, you know, because uh, New, uh, New York City is a melting pot, so there's a lot of people that need to go places, okay? So uh, if a building is over 100 years old, you have to get... Uh, 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 you have to get either the state or the federal government to give you, uh, to give you, number one, to get permission, and number two, to give you money to put a ramp there. 
But uh, by law, now, if the ramp isn't there, uh, some of these construction companies that put these buildings up, they have what they call makeshift ramps. The, either the ramp is on wheels or something like that, and it goes to the building. But um, it's a law now that you have to have a ramp. Um, it becomes a problem when, the pro when it's too grandfathered, when, it's, when the building is way too old. Example. It took, I think, about 15 years for this part of Vermont. We have a, um, a, a, an art gallery, you know, with paintings and things. It took yes. 10 to 15 years just to get an elevator. So <laughs> if the building is too old, then, then it becomes a problem. But yeah, I, I see your point there. So Yeah, I mean, that's... Go ahead. Sorry. Also, jobs. Mm -hmm. Technically, and I know some of us do work, but other, technically, there are polls out there saying more people did it, uh, more people with the mental disability want to work, mm -hmm. but there's not enough jobs going around. And I think it's, and, and, oh, and that is also a big issue. Now, here's the thing, and another big issue. Um, I, I, you guys at the Self-Advocacy Association in New York State, um, a lot of the train stations in New York are not uh, train stations, are not, don't have elevators, are not accessible. Is there anything that you guys are doing or any campaigns that the Self-Advocacy Association in New York State is doing to help with that issue? Because that, that's a big issue in New York. Yeah, I mean, I know we have we have caught that in the, with the MTA, which is the, the which is the um, they say office. Then they making changes, so mm -hmm. and they are trying to keep everything up to date, especially elevators, because one of the problem, like you say, public transportation is a big problem in New York City, mm -hmm. and what they doing is. They are, we have, they are, um, <clears throat> sorry, they are. Um, Accessorize, another big problem. In charge, in, yeah, they're in charge of the elevators, and they are keeping up, and they are, I think they're pulling, I know for a fact, they're pulling some elevators in, 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 they put some elevators in stations mm -hmm. and keep maintaining because sometimes also could be they break down a lot. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the, the also that is, a, that also is one of the problems we are facing. Also, or the other one, I don't know if you guys have uh, assessor right? Uh, well, it's called paratransit, yes. Yeah, here is called assessor right, paratransit, and we have our own, but they are with delays they always they not as reliable as some. They're working on it, but they're not as reliable. And that is one also with a lot had to do with people moving around. But also is also other issue is privacy and choice, which which let me give you a sample. If you live in a a house with a lot of people, mm -hmm. you don't have the privacy that you want. Privacy, and when you come yeah, from privacy. your own day doing work mm -hmm. or doing work or being a day program, sometimes you just want to be left alone. You don't want to deal with people. I mean, I don't, and I'm very out there. I'm very out social. But sometimes you just need a place where... Um, do you, you live on, if you don't mind me asking, do you live on your own or you live in a group home? I live on my own now. Mm -hmm. uh, but before, be, when I started this about uh, nine, ten years ago, I used to live in this separate area. But, but because of my work, I hear a lot, I hear a lot of people, a lot of visual. Uh, they do live with a lot of people in their houses. Mm -hmm. And they talk to us about it a lot, and they tell us about it. Mm -hmm. And 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 some of the houses don't. I, some of the houses don't don't 
I mean, we are trying to get the state to oversight more on it because sometimes they don't listen to the person with a disability, with a disability which is sad, but some houses, some houses, some houses do that and they don't understand that the person want a little space in the house where they could be alone sometimes. And like we all do, and they don't have no privacy. And also, accessible body size, which means accessible that you- what? Can you say, can you repeat that body, again, please? Body size. What? Oh, vo oh voting uh, sites. I'm sorry, I, I misunderstood. Sorry. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah. So, sorry about my space. Sometimes no, it's not. Fine. It's okay. Go ahead. Because one of my denax is my dis is my speech. But basically, why we say that? Because because in you had the right at the 18, you had the right to vote. Mm -hmm. Even even if you are this, even if you have disabilities. But the problem is that some areas, you even even if you can't vote, you can't get into the buildings mm -hmm. because some of them maybe don't have ramps or maybe just stairs. So that is also very important because everybody has the right to to vote, and they cannot do it if you are a person in a wheelchair if you deal with that situation, which mm -hmm. is hard. Well, they're so, well, so, but yeah. here, so let me explain. In Vermont, what they're doing is, because for me, I'm visually impaired, and I also have a hearing problem. I'm, I'm getting a um, hearing aid soon. So, what they what they do in the voting polls in, in the um, uh, for the vote, they give us a tablet, and it looks like a computer, and you can mm -hmm. just you know, they give you instructions on what to do, and and then you can vote. So if you have problems, they're, they're, they're starting to do that um, in a lot of the voting polls. It never used to be that way, but they're start, they're, they're, um, they're, if you need help, they're starting to do that. But again, I mean, it took a long time for that to happen. Like I say, also in New York City, also we have some, uh, like you say, machines where um, where they are doing that, but you mm -hmm. had to ask for them. They don't give them out just, and also you had to ask for them. If you don't ask for them, they might have it, they might not have it sometimes, which is sad. Yeah. Also the problem sometimes mainly is about the ability access to it. Mm -hmm. Because how can you use that machine if you can't even get into the building? Yeah, that's, that's true. That is, that is a big uh that's a big issue right now so yeah. one of those so and this issue yeah be going on for a couple be going on for years mm -hmm. so that as we see we still got a long way but we are getting we are, slowly we are getting there mm -hmm. slowly i mean i'm not saying it's perfect a system where we live in, mm -hmm. but you, but we are, there are some improvement, but it's still a long way to go. So, so both so of that you, we have so, so issues. both of you now, what, what are some of the biggest issues that the Self-Advocacy Association of New York State um, is working on? And um, because, uh, yeah, it, I mean, there's just a lot. I mean, we've come a long way as far as advocacy is concerned, but it just, you know, there's certain things like there's, for example, there's too much abuse still going on in um, in uh, in some nursing homes and other places. That, you know, uh, um, there's not enough staffing, like we said. And um, I mean, what are some of the biggest issues that you guys are working on? And there's still, I think. 23 to 25 states that are still institutionalizing people with disabilities. It used to be 39. It went down. It went. It used to be 39 states. But um, what are some of the biggest issues that you guys are working on? Well, like I say, those are the big issues at this moment that we advocate. But there are a lot more that we do touch on them. 
but they're going to take time. Mm -hmm. And 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 it's not easy. <laughs> like I say, it's not easy change. And we are working for change, like you, like we all are. Mm -hmm. So let me, so that why it's hard to, so, but these are some of the top issues right now that we work on. And it's getting, it's getting better, but it's not there. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason why it took so long? Ah, the government sometimes slow. <laughs> I, I mean, and also it's change is hard for people anytime. I mean, I, I don't like change actually myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm a person with, but the government take time to do a lot of this stuff that you have been done. But also I think it's just time and patience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that they're going to take time, but that, that is what we have again. And there are more issues out there every day and we learn more. And we are working on as we are working on to make sure that they hear our voice as self advocates, and that why our job, that why we we go with a mission that with self advocacy. So, she's in New York State is a baby is a baby important because we do have a a a table. We do talk to. I would take stay anxiously, which is O P W D D in New York State. Do you think and go ahead? And I guess the the best I could do, Larry. Mm -hmm. Lisa, is there anything else you wanna to say towards that that uh, what what do you think needs to change as self advocates? As you guys are self advocates. What do you yeah. think needs to change in the system? I think Lisa no, to us. I, I'm right? asking her. I'm asking her. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, Lisa. Gee, um, a lot. We, um. Go ahead. Still, people think that because we have a disability, we um don't. Don't matter mm -hmm. that we don't. All we need is to um cut away and to leave us. But we're people too. We're we matter. Yeah, we have disabilities, but. We want to work. We want to be in the community. And we're fighting for um equal rights. And we have rights too. Okay, uh Uli, did you wanna add more to that? I think Lisa got it. Okay, oh, uh, something happened to, oh, okay. Um, oh, you might have. Okay, so what is, we have uh, a couple, we have about 13 minutes left. Um, what didn't we touch on? Is there anything that you wanna say that um, really important to, for people? So um, why is it so important to become an advocate? And, um, uh, you know, to advocate. So why is it important for people to become an advocate in their own rights? Like I said, we're people too. We have rights. No, but why is it so important for people to speak up why, for themselves? Okay. I mean, Lisa, you want me to take... Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Why is it so important? Because we need, we need to take a step we need to take a stand about our own future. Whatever that, I, I mean, we all have needs, but if we don't, like I said, one person could be great, you no, know? like one person could speak, but the other, if we put all us together 
and become an advocate, that government will listen to us, that issue that matters to us every day. Housing, uh, jobs, and also it's very important because I think we need to speak up because it's time for us to take charge of our own lives. Okay. Um, do you think, how can I put this? Um, I understand that there are some people that can't speak up for themselves, so parents and other caregivers help. Okay. Do you think even though a person is not so independent that they can still do stuff for themselves and become independent? Yes. That's my point. Go ahead. Yes. That's what we teach. We teach people who can speak, can communicate, but somehow, some way, they can communicate. And that's what we're teaching them. And we're also here to advocate for them, too. Um, uh, is there, all right, also, so, I go just ahead. Want, sorry, no, go just ahead. one more point. Just one more point about that, and then I will share up. No, it's um, okay. No, 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 keep going. Okay, remember, even nonverbal person, like we have, even they have brains. And they say that again. Can they, you repeat that again, please? Okay, even even nonverbal person, like cannot talk like you and me talking right now, traditional way. They still have a brain. They they have a brain, and they need to. They still have a lot to say. And it's very important them to hear them too. Not just me and Lisa because we are very out. We could talk like this. So they have their own way of, of speaking, like Lisa was saying. So my point is, everybody had, everybody was born with a brain, okay. and they had the right to speak. Whatever mm -hmm. they need to say, they say in their own way, mm -hmm. and we had to listen. What, um, so what are the future goals of Self-Advocacy Association in New York State? Okay. We're continuing making sure people with developmental disability have a place at the table with decision makers. Mm -hmm and had their voices heard. We also continue advocating for the support and funding needed for people with ICD. We continue supporting self-advocates to be part of their communities. We also continue supporting self-advocacy groups now and in the future across New York State. Okay. <laughs> well, um, before we go, um, um, where can people get in touch with you guys? Uh, give me the address and the phone number for self-advocacy of New York State. Yes, you can reach us at our office at 25 Beaver Street in New York, New York, New York, one, one, Zero 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 four, and our number is six four six eight nine six one nine three eight. Okay, um, 
So six four six. Go ahead. Eight nine six one nine three eight. Well, okay. Um six four six. Okay, repeat that again for our viewers. Six four six. Mm -hmm. Eight nine six. Mm -hmm. One nine three eight. Okay. Um, well, I would like to thank you guys for joining me on this edition of Able Den On Air. And for more information on Able Den On Air, you can go to, um, you can also Google the Self Advocacy Association of New York State and go to www.sanis.org. That's S A N Y S dot org. Www dot s a n y s dot org and for more information on uh, on Ableton on air and what you've seen today you can go to www.orcamedia.net that's www.orcamedia o r c a m e d i a dot net I'm Lauren Seiler see you next time Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yihad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Able Den On Air has been seen in the following publications. Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists.